Welcome to Payments, Cards and Mobiles, the future of banking. I'm joined today by Matt Phillips of Diebold Nixdorf and Alex Park of Metrobank. Both of these companies are deeply involved in digital banking. On the one side, Diebold Nixdorf deliver digitally enabled connected commerce solutions for the financial industry. On the other, Metrobank is one of the pioneer challenger banks who has successfully integrated physical and digital banking. Today, we're going to talk about future of banking and the challenges financial institutions face in providing and adhering to a digitally focused strategy. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. So, why are financial services and banks lagging behind in this digitization process? We find ourselves in an industry at the moment, Alex, that's hugely disrupted by the mobile. Uh, and in the last five years, we've seen over a 350% increase in the use of mobile banking apps. And that's a trend that's just set to continue. Um, many of the high street banks historically have just been about the branch. Um, and in recent years, obviously, as we know, and we're talking today, digital has become wholly relevant. What that's meant is that those legacy infrastructures that they have, they need to try and steer those to more an agile platform that delivers those flexible digital journeys that we as consumers now demand. And that's going to take some time. And I think that's why, as we see in the, in the industry, you know, banks like Metro Bank partnering and collaborating with the fintechs out there to plug those gaps whilst they go on that, that journey of simplification of their architecture. I'd agree. I, if you look over the past 15 years, digital has effectively reshaped every industry and it's ongoing and banks are no exception. I think the companies that have done best over the past 15 years are those that have modern tech stacks. You know, typically they started 10 or 15 years ago, have built modern you know, services and platforms and, and ultimately better customer experiences. Mm. So I think for banks, partly is legacy tech. Um, and I think part of it is actually having that internal culture that is geared around digitization, that modern way of thinking. The consumers have digital platforms in their hands all the time. Uh, what is the effect on the consumer at the moment that you're seeing from not having the same level of digitization from the banking sector? In simple terms, it translates into customer frustration. Major tech companies are setting the standard now in terms of what's expected and consumers are living in that world day in, day out. And then when they go to a, a bank which doesn't have the same level of standards, it turns into frustration. So this could be as simple as filling out paper forms when in fact a simple digital process would make sense. So I think you're finding it's turning into frustration and actually some customer migration as well. So customers are more likely now to adopt other technologies and services, other companies, simply out of frustration. I don't know what you're seeing, Matt. Yeah, I, I think I totally agree. And I think the benchmark seems to be in the retail space with the likes of Amazon and eBay. Exactly. Where you have that really simple, intuitive, frictionless uh, journey. And as Alex says, you know, consumers now demand that. Why shouldn't I have the same level of experience with my financial services provider? So, you know, I think trying to focus on getting that right uh, will drive loyalty. Um, but I think we also need to remember trust. I think um, a lot of the, the digital players coming into the market that are relatively new, relatively unknown, I think there's still a hell of a lot of trust in high street brands like Metro Bank and, and others out there where you, know, you have that sense that if something does go wrong, I can still walk into my local branch and, and, be, and be met by someone who, uh, who can help me rather than someone on the end of a phone or, or on the end of an email. We, we do see the, the fintech players dominating niches. Um, obviously, the bank's given an overarching view on, across those platforms. What are the potential losses to the banks of not moving to digital fast enough? I'd say fairly significant. Um, I think, you know, as we've said, you know, the, the, the customer experience, the benchmark is in, is in retail. So being able to deliver applications and more in a lifestyle format. So it's nice to be able to check your balance on your phone, but does that really actually enhance my daily life? Arguably no. Yeah. So being able to put more journeys onto the digital platform that would mean perhaps I don't have to go to a branch, as Alex said, to fill out a, a paper form. I think that's absolutely critical in driving that loyal customer date, customer base in, in years to come. You know, I think I think you're right. And I think if you go back to, you know, fintechs have the, have the benefit of modern tech stacks. And what they've done is they've picked off a given niche and done it really well. So made a, a modern, seamless journey and they've seen customers migrate. So on one level, 
the cost to banks is actually customer migration. How do you hold on to those customers? How do you meet their expectations um, when you haven't got the same level of capability? So that's definitely a challenge. And of course, with that comes, you know, income and all the rest of it. And if people start to use other services to make payments, it starts to chip away at the bank's income stream. So all those challenges are out there. I think they're solvable, um, but you definitely have to have an iron focus on digitization in your bank if you're going to deliver against that. And in terms of uh, the, the banking industry bridging gaps, do you think that they have a, a stronger position to do something beyond banking, or do you think that they will stick more to banking but bridge the gap between the digital platforms and the physical, the retail that we've been discussing? I think this is where the focus needs to be purely on the consumer and the level of innovation and what that's going to mean in terms of how the channels are going to involve physical and digital. I mean, for me, they're still hugely relevant today and I think will be in, in years to come. So I think, um, you know, rather than thinking in channels where you have historically a digital channel and a, and a physical channel, it's now there is the consumer. And I think from a bank's perspective, you start there. What are the customer journeys? What are they demanding? And what's the best way to serve those customers, either through digital or physical means? Absolutely. I think you know, if you looked at it today and said, where can things be improved just in the banking realm? Definitely this tie up between digital and physical is, is a big thing. And it, it's difficult to get right, but you can get it right. So I definitely think that there are opportunities in that arena for banks to make you know, much better customer experiences. And, and that's very much you know, the ethos of what we're trying to do at Metro Bank. I do think that beyond that, I, I think there's a trend where you know, banks can start to do more outside of what you might think of core financial services. I think things like open banking help to accelerate that. I think the growing number of fintechs in the UK help that as well. So I think over time you'll see a, a growth in terms of the services that banks can offer actually. Yeah, I think that's where we bring education into the mix. So you mentioned open banking and I think, you know, we know it's out there within the industry, but do really yeah. consumers understand what that can enable for them? I think probably not quite yet. So I think there's some way to go, but I think it, it has a huge uh, opportunity yeah, there to, to change the market. I agree. Sure. I think the, the consumer um, demands this personalised experience uh, from the perspective of delivering it. You know, what is the perfect consumer experience and how do you go about delivering that? I think... Over the past five years, a lot of it has been around building seamless, frictionless journeys. And in many respects, that's quite obvious. Um, and there's been vari varying levels of success around that. I think the big thing that is changing, though, it's all about contextualization now. Mm. How do you orchestrate a customer's journey, maybe across different channels, maybe even across different industries? Um, for example, I'm a banking customer, an SME that needs to do my digital tax, for example. How do I interface with the government? So I think... We have the tools now, whether it's you know data, device data, geolocation, you can bring that to bear to start to personalise journeys. So the old world where it was a one size fits all for everybody, mm. that is now giving way to these much more contextualised journeys. And I, I think there's a lot of interest in opportunity in that, that arena. So let's introduce the theme of artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things. Um, clearly, they are uh, big themes that we see in the industry and they're, and they're coming up. Where are we in introducing those into financial services and, and banking? With AI and IoT, I think we have two very disruptive technologies. AI is already out there. I know Metro Bank are yeah. already using AI in terms of the, the data analytics uh, from a consumer point of view. And, and others are too. And I think there's there's two things there with AI about driving those more contextualized journeys that Alex spoke about a few moments ago. But also I think it's an opportunity to drive efficiency in back office processes from a from a bank's point of view. I think AI, IoT for me arguably could be more disruptive. So I think by 2020 we're going to see over 200 billion IoT enabled devices out there. So how can we as technology providers and as banks make sure that the consumer journeys of tomorrow adopt those technologies. AI is certainly taking a foothold in financial services now, um, and you're starting to see people use it. For example, Metro Bank has rolled out a new product, a personal financial management tool, which is AI powered. Um, it's called Insights, helps people manage the money. So I think you're starting to see use cases like that come into the market, and certainly you're gonna see more and more of that over time. 
I don't think we're quite yet at the stage where we're building AI-centric products or services, but I think that comes over time. It maybe is a bit of a longer burn for that type of stuff. I'd agree with you, Matt. I think IoT probably is one of the more exciting ones out there. I think what that will give is broader reach to financial services. I think it will allow very different customer experiences, you know, on-demand financial services when you need them. So I think that's really interesting, really exciting. And I do think that's where it goes over the next you know, three to five years. Okay, so uh, we've talked about the state of the industry uh, at the moment. Uh, we've talked about where we think it's moving to now. Um, let's think about the next five years. So I think um, we're going to see continuing evolution, really. So evolution of digital services, you know, the, the mobile journeys are just going to get more and more seamless and frictionless, as we've been talking about. But for me, I don't think we can ignore the branch. I think the branch will still be wholly relevant to many customer journeys. But I think we're going to see changing role of the branch, whether the branch will become more of a destination hub where you go for those, those bigger conversations that require that that in-depth financial advice as opposed to purely you know, cash-related transactions. I don't know what you think, Alex. Yeah, no, I'd agree. I would say that you're certainly going to see continued heavy investment into digitization programs, that's for sure. I think you're going to see much more connection between financial service providers. I don't just mean high street banks, I mean challenger banks, fintechs, because the ability to move data around now, make things more portable, just opens up the world for new experiences, new products. So I almost see a, a bit of a dissolving of boundaries between you know, channels. It's no longer about web versus mobile versus store. They're one of the same. It's about orchestrating a journey across those things. It sounds to me like all of the financial institutions and, and the banks have seen the, uh, the trend of digital platforms and are moving towards it. Uh, some, like Metrobank, are a bit more forward-thinking and have developed their product and it's there. Others are moving towards it. Uh, I think you're right. It's very exciting and a very interesting time to be in retail banking and payments at the moment. Matt, Alex, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very Thanks. much.